Where you get it from? I got it from the trap. What aspect of your game has been most improved over that year? Uh, as far as improvement, I was hitting my boy time. Just get more technical. When you're not, when you're not, uh, when you're not actively fighting. You kind of work on your technique and stuff. So I'm kind of fine tuning that. Not necessarily just getting the chip for a fight, but just kind of fine tuning my boy time. So that's probably what's improved about my game the most. And now coming up to the final, folks on the card. And where have you been doing your your Muay Thai training? Uh, El Pro Muay Thai. Well, I'm right, it's half a mile from my house now, bro. Um, and then uh, my cardio, I've been doing a D1 sports out on the line. Uh, uh, walk, baby. Cool, thanks, sir. Go ahead. Uh, this one's for Scott. Uh, obviously, your last four fights have been losses, but you were in a different mental state you know, than now. What do you think uh, has been the biggest improvement mentally for you coming into this fight? Uh, the biggest improvement uh, mentally for me is, uh, is I sobered up with drinking. It's been 143 days today, so. Congratulations. Uh, uh, the, last, uh, the last few years of fighting, I, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't like it. I've always said I would, I would only fight as long as I enjoy it. I don't care if I'm, now I'm 34. I didn't care if I was 30 when I quit or 40. Uh, but uh, I quit enjoying it. I was there for the paycheck, and uh, I just couldn't wait to get back to the bottle, so. I uh, got away from that, and uh, my family life is great. Uh, training is fun again, and uh, you know, Brandon gave me a great opportunity to step in and fight him. What, what I appreciate the most is uh, he was first and foremost there as a friend and worried about my sobriety, and then uh, after sobering up and getting my head clear and training, uh, you know, he brought up the chance to fight Mark Matthews for the belt, and I jumped all over it. Yeah, it's a completely different Scott Smith, who I've known him for, what, like, seven, eight years, and, I mean, he was the first one here for media day, and I was like, oh, is that Scott? But, you know, so, he's uh, come a long way, he's always been a good person, and he's just, uh, it's a pleasure to have Scott back, so, I'm excited. Whereas before, I'd be the first one to show him it was free drinks. <laughs> John? Uh, yeah, this one's for Bernard. Um, you relinquished your Gladiator Challenge belt to come and fight for West Coast. I mean, I'm just wondering what your decision was to come over here and, and what was your choice behind fighting Jeremiah? Um, bigger competition. Uh, uh, bigger competition. Obviously, your last bout, you uh, won at a rise. I mean, this one's going to be in the cage. What do you think is the difference between uh, fighting in, in the ring and the cage? I mean, it's, it's just all the same as a fight. Um, I found it harder to take someone off, uh, take someone down to the ground with the ropes, looking and stuff. So, um, definitely it's going to be a lot easier to be able to use the cage. Um, I just see it as a four dimensional mat, you know, jiu jitsu So, yep. Jared. Yeah. Derek, I wanted to ask you a question. You spent some time in Thailand training. Can you tell us a little bit about how does it differ in Thailand than training in the United States? Uh, I actually spent six months of in Thailand in training. Uh, the training is a lot different. It's a lot more intense. There's not really rules there, so the trainer really just put it on you real hard. And uh, I mean, it's just the best state of training in the world that you can get. So I mean, they definitely won't be any lacking. I stand up my fight, so you guys should have to watch out for that.
those men will do the fighting there. Um, he definitely brings a lot of good kicks. And that sounds great. And um, yeah, I've just been praying on the Utah lot for this fight. to look past this fight by any stretch of the imagination because I know that you don't, but are you looking at some of the up-and-comers in that division, i.e. Benito Lopez? You know, I, I, I completely leave it up to, um, you know, my manager, Michael Bruno, and um, promoters, um, you know, and I'm just looking for good matches for myself, so uh, I don't, I'm not one to call out anyone, um, so yeah, I mean, he's, he's, Benito's very talented, um, I like the kid. Uh, but I don't, I don't see myself trying to, you know, make any call out on anybody for any reason. Yeah, for Mark, I mean, you've had a lot of opportunities to fight, like, bigger name guys. I mean, what do you feel like Scott is going to do for you on a West Coast stage? Uh, well, I've been wanting to fight. I've, I've been working to uh, fight with Brandon for a while. Just things kept falling out with and stuff, like, just scheduling. And uh, when, he called me, uh, when he called me to fight Scott, I mean, uh, I was a I know how tough Scott is. I know the challenge that's in front of me. I mean, like, anybody who knows me, man, I'm, I'm not about taking, you know, uh, easy pass him anywhere. So, uh, I finally get to uh, step into the cage for the main event with one of the local big dogs. It's time to see if I'm on the porch. Mark, you've had a couple of, uh, at least one fight where you got ready for it, everything was going well, didn't have an opportunity to do that, and now you're up for this fight. Has that had any effect? on the mental game for you? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, uh, when I was getting ready for, for the last fight before I got injured, uh, man, like, I was really anticipating that fight to not get the closure of that moment and then have it uh, somewhat postponed to a moment like this with someone that's, that's, you know, just as big of a name, just as dangerous. Like, I mean, it really just kind of compounded it. So to me, it just, I stayed active even while I was uh, injured working around it. So, I mean, really, it was just a, a, a really long camp with uh, somewhat of a recovery break in the middle, so. Question for Scott. Obviously, most of your finishes are by KO or TKO, and uh, Mark's got a couple submissions and a couple uh, knockouts of himself. What do you see most dangerous from him as an opponent being, uh, you know, your opportunity to start fresh in person? Well, I, I know his shit has come a long way, and he's, uh, he's at the right camps that, you know, in the main general, his camps are great. Uh, but he's got a brawling background, you know, he's kind of got my style of background. So I see his, I see his banging it out. Uh, you know, we're both ready to bang it out, and I think we're both ready to go to the ground. But I just think it's, it makes it a great matchup, you know. Brandon did a good job putting the right fight on, so. Yeah, it, it's, it's a fan friendly fight. We got this one. Uh, this one's for Jordan as well. Obviously, um, you know, being young in the sport, you're now an opportunity to, to be on the same table with a, a lot of guys that have been able to build a career in the sport. What do you think about West Coast giving you that opportunity, and what do you want to do with it? Uh, I'm stoked to have this opportunity to fight for West Coast. I like their venues. It's a big, big venue. It's a way to get your name out of the So I definitely appreciate it. Definitely. 
Brandon, I actually have a question for you. After this fight, who's in line to fight the winner of these two guys in the middleweight division? We actually were just talking about that. Uh, we have a lot going on, obviously, with the Feely Griffin fight at 170. Um, and those guys will fight anyone. They want to fight the best, no matter if they got a drop or a go up a weight class. And even Max, uh, definitely down the future, looking at, at that as well, at 185, jumping up a weight class. So uh, that's a possibility. Uh, not to get past the Feely Griffin fight, but uh, that could be uh, entertaining, definitely, at 185. OK. Can I ask another question yeah, to sure. follow up on that? So <laughs> this is just for me personally. Yeah. I have I have issue with fighters moving up weight divisions right away for a championship belt without having to go through somebody in that division. Yeah. Is there a reason behind that? Uh, obviously, it's a unique situation. Uh, Andre Feely, I believe, is uh, the best fighter in the region, pound for pound. Um, I know it's risky, but uh, Feely is a humongous one point fiver. He walks around at I saw him last going 190, so he probably would be bigger than Max on the day of weight, which is crazy, uh, or the day of the fight. But it was a unique situation. Usually we wouldn't do that, uh, but he is the best fighter in the region. So Right, but you just said that there's a chance that maybe Max Griffin or somebody else might move up to 185 to take on these guys. So is that going to be automatic, or are they going to be taking uh, a step up as well? It's another unique situation. Max, same thing. I believe he's, you know, top three fighter in the region as well. So if they're, you know, it depends on caliber fighter, but I believe they can handle it. Max is worthy of it. He's one of the best fighters in the region as well. Um, but if it's, you know, some guy just coming up, you know, three and one fighter or something like that, uh, we, we wouldn't allow it. But for those two guys, they've done a lot for our organization, and we want to give them the, the, the best opportunities. And if we thought they couldn't handle it, be a champion at that level, we wouldn't do it. Can so I ask, do yeah. any of the fighters have an opinion on that? Is the guy going to remain silent? Well, it, uh, see the, fifth. the way I look at it, if a guy's a champion in, in another division and decides to go up, well, I mean, if he's, been, if, if, if he's clearing out his division, then, I mean, I, I think he deserves to get to a title shot. You know, I, I think it all depends on, on, on who the fighter is and, and basically what their path was while getting up. You know, especially in these, like, smaller promotions, or not smaller, but more regional promotions, you know, like, who's he really going to go through to get there? You know what I mean? Like, if he's a champion, let him fight for the next championship. He happens in boxing all the time. But it is unique. I mean, jumping up two weight classes, we'll probably never see that again. Uh, and uh, I didn't even think about it. I wish I could take credit for it. Uh, but they came to me and uh, Feely wanted to, wanted to do it. And Max was, let's go. So, you know, Max always wants to fight the best. And I think for the fans, it's a great, it's a, it's yeah, it's, great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I understand where you're going from, though. Uh, this one's for Bernard. Um, you've been able to pick up three finishes your last four fights. Um, some people might, might see glad of your challenge as a, a tribal organization. Do you think you might be underrated in this area, considering what you've been able to do so far? Uh, just a little. I don't have to fight for a long time now. Just kind of the territory I found really flashy. I'm a big talker. Uh, keep myself alive. Back in the fight, the whole plan of my vision, even though I've been on the show, and then I 
Yeah, I just made a, a, a mental change in my, in my life and everything I do. And, and now that I'm here at and sober, I, I'm seeing the, the rewards of my sobriety and what it means to my family life. Like I said, it's phenomenal. So uh, this isn't some, anything I haven't dealt with before. Uh, I'm very honored to be doing it, you know, fight job. Great guy like Mark, you know, he's a great local fighter, uh, great local promotion. So I, you know, I'm honored to be doing this. And the, the last thing I want to screw up, I ever do, screw up and go back on my word of staying sober and embarrass myself. So I, I prefer to get it out there to everybody. Uh, it's better to have eyes on you than you know, hiding up the ground. That's when you get in trouble. We got one more. Okay. All right, Brandon. So you've got a uh, female fight on this card. Yes, two. Are, two of them. Are you looking to expand the female division? Yes. Yeah, it's just hard to, you know, pull. There's not a huge pool of female fighters, so we're doing a couple of AMI fighters. Um, you know, Arlene Colbreth, Donna Garza, two pretty high level, you know, amateurs. Yeah. Aspen Lad is supposed to be uh, an excellent. Uh, so we're excited uh, for them, and uh, we're kind of easing our way into it, but there's not a lot to choose from at the pro level. So we're definitely excited about it, and uh, it's definitely something we're looking at uh, moving into the pro portion of the team. Excellent. And then quick comment. Yeah. I just wanted to thank you guys. I haven't heard any trash talk amongst any of you guys out there. And for me personally, I like that. I know some people like that, and they think it, it sells tickets. But I think it's very cool that you guys are just kind of being good sportsmen and just making this all about the fight, not about running your mouth. So I appreciate that. So. All right, last one, Jonah. Uh, this is for Jeremiah. Um, I think that you guys kind of have like the sleeper pick for fight of the night potential. You guys have like, uh, two styles that I think match up pretty well together. And what do you think that um, Bernard's biggest thing in the cage is going to be against a guy like you? Like you said, you're really good on the mat. You've had a lot of experience lately and performed really well. So what's going to be his biggest what? What's going to be the biggest thing that he brings against you inside the cage? Like problems? Problem on danger? I mean, honestly, I've done, I've done all my homework, I've done all my research, and I don't see anything that impressive. Yeah, I was going to respond to that earlier comments. Do any of you want to talk any trap? <laughs> Where did you need to get an AC? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it, yeah. Our next venue will have AC, so we'll be good. Hey, but before I got to bounce out, I'm sure everybody wants to say a couple of closing words, but I, uh, Mark just came from Frisco. I'm actually headed that way. i got to get my family back to uh, get your flight. I want to say thank you, Mark, for taking the fight. Honor to be fighting for granted for putting the fight on it. Honored to be on the card with all these guys, and you know, thanks for all you guys out there. Mark, I know you're a great tattoo artist, great fighter, so I got a favor as a tattoo artist. We already talked about you, you know, down the road. A boy, uh, Max here, he's had trouble with his belly button ring infection. So, <laughs> so I think you gotta give him a, a tattoo of the belly button ring so he can take that thing out, man. <laughs> we'll just hit him with the Dennis Rodman special. <laughs> all right, thank you guys. I got a bounce Thank you guys, appreciate it. Thanks. Awesome. Where you get it from? I got it from the top. Where you get it from? I got it from the top. Where you get it from? I got it from the top.